Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey, hello again. Uh, Steve Stack with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Got a very interesting guest again today uh, down here at Studio 3B, Canfield, Ohio. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to welcome back uh, Munch as Northeast Ohio knows him as uh, Mr. Mark Bishop. Uh, radio host, personality, celebrity, and proud to call him my friend. Thank Munch. you, bro. Well, I appreciate that, man. You know, welcome. It's, it's it's great to be here. Like I said, I'm home. This is a home away from home. How cool is that? Hey, if you need one, the door's always open. But I, I understand that, you know, and I'm always a treat to be here. I'm treated like family, and I appreciate that. Well, we're we're really excited to have you back. Last time you visited, uh, we kind of got off track. We, uh, Who, me? Deviate? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we talked about a lot of great stuff, you know, uh, life's lessons and, and uh, our, our relationship from the beginning and uh, up till now. And today we want to we wanna go into a couple different things. You know, we scratched the surface on, on remodeling ideas and this and that. And, and I know your, your situation at home. You talked about the three kids and four, four kids, and the youngest one getting <laughs> getting at the youngest one. The youngest school. one's on college, so he's not getting And, and so. now, uh, <laughs> uh, now, now, mom's mom's gonna uh, take some of those funds and redivert them back to the house, maybe. Well, you know what? Steve came out and just put it this way: it's what you do. It's what Bear, what Bear Brothers do. Made a visual, gave the wife some ideas. She still has all the notes, and that uh, sooner than later. There's some wood flooring that'll be. It's funny how that happens. Yeah, huh? is that neat? That's good because it's got to you know we're wood 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 we're wood floor people love it you know and uh, now the been walking around on it for uh, 22 years so there's areas oh, yeah. that get worn out. We we don't have to stop at the wood floor. We can put the doors in. We can change some moldings out. Interior doors, baby. Especially maybe, maybe some new countertop here or there. Some of that butcher block countertop. Yeah, you know what's interesting. And my oldest son, who programs fine microscopes, do you think he would have understood someday that, uh, that if you're chopping something up, you can't do it on the countertop, you need a cutting board? <laughs> that was a few years ago. That's all I can say. But remember this, too, for those interior... Look at me. Here, here we go again. For those interior doors, if you have a new house, I understand. You're trying to make things more affordable. But one line I like I came up with, the interior doors and new homes are like tissue paper with hinges, you know? Get rid of them, come to Baird Brothers and get your doors here. You know, and that's that's a very, very achievable. Whether you have a, a professional contractor come into your house and do it, uh, you've got a buddy that's pretty hand in, handy in carpentry, uh, or if you want to take it on yourself. Brother, I could yeah. put up doors. If I could put up doors, anyone can. Okay, you know, and whether we're talking <laughs> new pre-hungs or replacement uh, slabs, uh, and that, can dramatically change the interior feel of a home. Hey, see, I'm glad you said the feel too, not just the look, but the sound. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, the sound's not like echoing all over the home. Yep, and and uh, you know, there's a lot of projects like that and, and uh, I'll be at the ready waiting for the phone call from the wife, okay? You will get it sooner <laughs> than later, my friend. So uh, thanks, you know, thanks again for for hanging out with me today. And, My pleasure. You know, we talked about some of your background on, on, the, on the previous podcast. And, and uh, today we want to get into uh, the how radio influences our consumers. They're, they're not only our consumer when you're advertising for us, but they're your consumer. Mm -hmm. And you've got to pique their interest. You've got to give them good information. Uh, how do you approach your day to day on that? And and what's your mindset when you start talking about a Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods or some of your other, you know, sponsors up up in the Cleveland area? How 
What mindset do you put yourself in? The mindset has to be that you have to, number one, believe in what you're talking about. If you don't believe it, it's not going to come out no matter how hard you try. So you want people to experience what you're saying coming from the heart, but also coming from knowledge and mind, not just playing on their emotions, playing on factual things too. Remember we talked about the last time around, you know, drafting a player. Okay, he's got this much speed, he can do this and that. However, he's high character, he's high quality, he's things like that. Yep. So what you want to do, you want to get a reaction from the folks listening in via the emotion you have, the believability you have, the passion you have for the product or for the brand that you're talking about. And and you do that and Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods are thankful that you do that. I've lost track of how many visits you've made to our 7060 Quarry Road location. Oh. Uh, numerous phone conversations we've had just to call and catch up. But you know, you have, now here's the little note for the future of it, other folks that you're, you know, gonna do, uh, you know, be a part of Baird Brothers. If I don't do that, I'm doing you a disservice, me a disservice, and the fans of the show a disservice because I find something new all the time. And I gotta tell you something, this guy's very wise, and no, he doesn't owe me money, I'm not trying to stroke him, okay? <laughs> Is that just in our conversations, it's like, son of a gun stack, and I'll stop for a second, you go, what are you doing? I'm writing that down. You gave me something and you didn't even realize it. You know, another little talking point, because as I said earlier too, sure you could look at the place, sure you could go on the website, sure talk to you, but it all adds up to the passion you have for it. And you gotta keep up to date. I mean, are you sitting pat all the time? <laughs> no. So there's new things all the time. It's my responsibility to do that for you and do that for the fans. And, and we're guilty of it. I'm guilty of it, you're guilty of it. Together in conversation, we're guilty of it. And, and, and you, said, you said something and it's gonna take us down a different road. It's a short road, I promise, I promise folks. <laughs> <laughs> did I just do this? <laughs> you, you, you did this. Going back on, on uh, visits, telephone conversation, and not too awful long ago when you were recuperating from your procedure that you had mm -hmm. a, a few months back, six months back, whatever it's been, and, and we're thankful that you're doing well. Thank you. We were, we, we were trying to get hold of each other and I, and I flipped a text out to you. And I ended the text in, nothing important, checking in, just wanna chew the fat. My dad always <laughs> used, in fact, my godson now who's a major in the army, always said, Uncle Munch, you got time to chew the fat? That was my dad say, I guess, what is that? I mean, cause I'm eating meat. I know something, you know, a good steak has to have a little fat on it for taste or something. I don't know about it. I guess you're chewing the fat. You're, you're taking some time, kibitzing, right? I think your last visit, we chewed the fat for about an hour and a half. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, certainly. So, okay, you have an understanding of Baird Brothers, and, and uh, it's so important in, in advertising uh, that you understand our brand, uh, which you do, you understand the family, the family approach, the employee family relationship, uh, and you transvey that to, the, to your audience. Uh, from, from your perspective, why is it important for businesses to utilize radio advertising? Okay, number one, I'm gonna hit you with this, which is so cool, and you had mentioned a few times too, we are coming off something like we've never seen in our lifetimes and the dang thing's still lingering. And of course that was the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. I mean, it, it was for real. So what we're finding out, which I am honored and, and really blessed to be a part of, is that the folks out there listening or the folks going to, you know, looking at me on social media, this and that, people, want someone these days, and it stems back from a couple of years ago, which is something that they can trust. They want someone that makes them feel better. And we're finding out who are we, those in the radio business, that the, whatever you want to call me when I talk about Baird, 
uh, I call it a family member and a friend, yeah. but yeah. technically, you know, an influencer, an endorser, that they trust the people <clears throat> doing that. And why is that? Doesn't it happen overnight? I've cultivated trust for 43 years. And you can look back, I've never told anyone to go somewhere or see something or do something that would not be top of the line for them or worth their while. So people want people that they can trust. They also want people that make them feel better. Listening to, and I know sometimes you want to throw something at your speaker yeah. if I give you a take on something you disagree with, but they want people, want to reach out to people. There's less and less, in fact, I'm glad with this business that had the foresight. If you're listening, there's more and more people back again than just syndication on things. Is that now I could have a show in three or four cities, but I'm still a person that goes to those cities. People want more personal contact again, even if it is via the airwaves, and they want someone to make them feel happy. We found out too that listening to certain people, and uh, of course I'm with uh, you know iHeartMedia, that you know and different surveys that yeah that guy made me feel better by listening to him because I know what he's going through and sharing his life with us, sharing his life with them. And I want to hit you with this too. And you mentioned a word that's near and dear to me. I mean, I've got a passion. My passion is my family, my roots, and uh, yeah. uh, the family members like, like Baird Brothers that I talk about. But I've got a passion for radio. And if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this for 43 and a half years. But think about this, Steve. And I'm going to brag a little bit now, which I love yeah. to do about radio is that I'm going to take you back. Remember the old Walkman? You're beating me to the punch, but go oh, ahead. Oh, it's, no, should go I back ahead. up? Nope, go ahead. Okay. Remember the old Walkman with the cassette tapes? <laughs> ah, radio's finished. Everybody's going to have a Walkman. Okay. <laughs> but did every Walkman still have a radio tuner on it? Okay. Then we went from the Walkman to the Discman. <laughs> and I had a disc band because I traveled a lot, okay? And a lot of times with, with, with sports teams doing play-by-play -play and that. Yeah. So whether on a plane or on the bus, I'd have my disc band, okay? Still always had a radio tuner on it, okay? So, oh, it's all going to be satellite. Radio's going to go away, you know? Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I still listen to satellite radio too. But today, more than anything else, radio is stronger than ever. Radio has more listeners than ever. Radio dwarfs podcasting. Radio, I mean, podcasting is very important, don't get me wrong. Right. In fact, iHeartMedia is the top. It's, it's, it's one of the ingredients in the recipe. Yes, yes. iHeartRadio is the top podcast purveyor worldwide. So it's, it's another, another part of it in there. But what is the bottom line in all of this? It's radio. Now, some of it was enhanced by the pandemic, wanting to have a friend again. And I've always said, here's the topper. It's never saying, too, that we become our parents at one time, okay? <laughs> and then it moves on. Everybody, you, you'll find out, the youngsters out right. there. But did you ever hear the saying, the book is better than the movie? Yeah. Okay? Read a book. Read a book. And there's, there's a few books that... Uh, I read every couple of years, like For Whom the Bell Tolls, Hemingway. And you, you watch the book, wow, the book's much better. Why? You're thinking about it. And I firmly believe, yes, I like to watch sports on TV. But you know what? Listen to it. And Scotty Baird would agree with me. And you're a baseball guy. Listen to a game on radio. Watch it on TV. They're both great. They're both phenomenal. But you know what? The radio's a little more special. Last couple summers, once twice a summer, I get with my sons and daughters. We put the radio on the backyard, grill out some dogs. Sadly, this year I'll be grilling out vegan dogs for me, <laughs> and it tastes like sawdust and skin. I'm telling you. Now, but, yeah, now you uh, just stepped on some toes there, right? Yeah, no, but the kids are all eating the freaking ballpark franks and that, you know. And we put the, we crank the radio, crank, crank Hamilton yeah. up, and, and Rosie, and listen to them. It's just something about it. It sounds better on radio. Yes, you're saying much, but you still watch? Sure, I still watch it. Still, I do this. But for all these challenges, radio is still there. And guess what's interesting, too, which has grown more than anything else? AM radio. Wasn't AM radio going away a few years ago? Ah, hey. oh, you'll never <laughs> see it again. You know what I mean? And you'll never hear it again. And it's stronger than it's ever been. You And, and you you touched on on a couple different mm -hmm. things. And, and uh from a personal standpoint, okay. 
I'd rather, I'd rather hear Hammy call a home run shot. Oh, <laughs> right? I, I, away, man. <laughs> right, and 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 you're right. You know, you can't get to the stadium every 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 game, right. whatever, whatever. You know, if you catch one or two a, a year, you know, you're fortunate. But it, his call makes you sit in that seat, and your mind's envisioning where that ball is going and how deep it's going down right Tyler field. Tyler Aikman's in the park home run a couple years ago? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, and again, quick deviation. Everybody's out there going, uh-oh, what's he talking about now? And, and I had told uh, <laughs> Ken's from uh, the, the folks doing this uh, today with us is that the story about how my wife is very good with the hands on the hips give me the stare. <laughs> Whenever I have Hamilton on, and a little behind, behind the scenes, Hammy always goes, did I get you in trouble at all last week, Watch, <laughs> And here's why. Every once in a while, you go out, get some carry-out food or something like that, you know? And especially on the weekends or a Sunday after, late afternoon, and if Hammy's on, and it's the ninth inning, the Indians are winning, and I pull in the driveway, I've got to wait till the last out. Because Hammy always ends the game. There's a fly ball to right field. You know, you know, zippers underneath it. Ball game! And you know the Indians won. And the wife will be in the front window. Waiting on her cold food. With the looks. So I, I tell him, so I go, Hamilton, you got me in trouble again. He goes, then turn the darn radio off. I go, I can't. Because he's spellbound. He, he hypnotizes oh, you. Yeah. But you know what else? You look at Hammy and Rosie. Think about this. This is, this is heavy. And I like all different kinds of music. And I listen to music too. But think about this. Hamilton and Rosie. And you go to other cities. In Cincinnati for a while, it was Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxhall. And you go, you know, all around the world, you know, all around the country. That's our soundtrack of summer. You know that? That's a great analogy. Whether it's, you know, a Beach Boy song on a nice <sighs> sunny day or yeah. something like that. or That is our soundtrack of summer. And how does it come to you? On the radio. Oops. <laughs> no, and and, and going, going back to what you were touching on, uh, there, was, there was a day... Uh, when if you wanted to take in a game, it was via the radio, whether it was in your your backyard yeah. or in everybody's living room. There might not have been a TV, but there was a radio. Is your how much how much important information over the years have we got from the radio? How so, did the American citizenship keep track of the wars? Think about this via the radio. Right. Even now, you got bulletins, you have access. And I'll tell you what's even cool now. And you're thinking, okay, you know. Radio's even been enhanced more by what now? By the apps. Oh. Now, I know that we, know we, we, we don't joke. It's true, like WTAM 1100. Right. You know, we cover 38 states and half of Canada. But it's crazy when I get a phone call from Phoenix, Arizona. I got one from Costa Mesa, California. I don't even know where that is, you know, yeah. the other day, listening on the app. So think about that. You're listening to your favorite teams. <clears throat> You just put it in the app. You put what you want to have. So that's why it is still there for you, still there to have, and it's stronger than ever. And, and we just we just skip skipped ahead to another today. one. <laughs> no, yeah. to, to modern times. Yeah, today. And and you know it it could have been a threat uh, as radio progressed, and and you went with your cassette. Uh, example and and the the uh, disc and CDs and and that radio's always found its in even in today with the apps the streaming uh, so I, all part of the recipe like you said yeah I have I have uh, the the I heard app on a couple of my devices Good. right and and uh, to know that you're you're in you're in Cleveland, Ohio, doing your broadcast, and somebody out in California is responding to you. That tells me because we use you as a voice that we're getting out to and California with our message. Dot com is easy. You know, right. It's great to come to the brick and mortar. You know what else you'll get? I'll get people in Cleveland too, though, listening on the app because they go. You know, there's areas where I drive. I drive along Lake Road a lot, and the lake is there. Well, there, there's no antennas in the lake, you right, know, yeah, so yeah. you're not getting any bounce back on anything. But listen to this, and we've seen it, and again, just showing our age. Remember people at the ball games with the big headphones? 
the, with the antenna, listening to the yeah. radio. Right. Now, the next time you go to a ball game, I want you to look at the earbuds and what are they connected to? The phone. Right. And what is the phone app on with the Indians? WTM 1100, because you're watching the game, but you still want to get Hammy's take on what just happened. And you still want to hear what's going on. So it's amazing. So it's gone from the big, bulky headphones or, okay, Steve, this may be even before your time. Transistor radios that oh, were yeah. the size of a big book. Right. So you have this transistor radio in your earpiece that hooked around your ear. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing, but it's always generated by radio. You find out things via the radio. You know, there's there's so many uh, media available to to businesses today to get their messages out, and that's that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Uh, the branding, getting the message out about Bear Brothers Flying Hardwoods out here in Canfield, Ohio. Uh, and over the years, and accuse me of being old school, I've always been a proponent of radio and print. Over the years, I've been fortunate to visit tens of thousands of job sites. Mm -hmm. And now we're going back in, back in the day a little bit. You walked onto a job site. Throughout the course of the day, a radio was playing. And at break time, lunch time, the guys would sit around in a room and one might have a radio playing, but there was two or three reading uh, Plain Dealer. Hey, you know, I'm still a print guy, <laughs> big time. Right? And, and so some things change, but maybe not. Radio hasn't changed. Okay, another, boy, do I have too many stories? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you know, I'm a big bike. I love riding a bike. Big, big bike guy, okay? Well, this was be two, three years ago coming up this, or two years ago coming up this summer, is that uh, ran for a little bike ride and uh, helmet on and everything. Went to get off a curb. This was like not the new curb. This was like the old, old times curbs. And it was about a foot high. Edge of the tire caught it, I went down. I'll show you a picture. It looked like Muhammad <laughs> Ali got a hold of me. Or Sunny Liston. So it's funny. Once you did more, I broke my nose, my hands were all scraped up, this and that, and you scraped up even though I had a helmet on, there's no visor. Yeah, yeah. So if you hit face first, it's not gonna help you. And when I went to the emergency room at the clinic in Avon, Ohio, was we're talking to some guys, this and that, and they go, Are you in pain? I go, Yeah, but you know, I'll be the first to tell you. If, if this is not life threatening, you know what I mean? It's just, it just helped me, you know, real good. And a guy pulled me in. He goes, We were just listening to you. I mean, my show ended at six. I got on my bike at 6 10. And I go, What do you mean? He goes, Yeah, we have you on in the break room. So whether it's a hospital, a factory, a plant, a job site, you know what else that ties into, too, Steve? Nothing drives me crazier. I have people in radio. I can't believe they had me do seven shows this week. Seven shows? That's a vacation. You know? <laughs> or the you've heard this. The air conditioning is broken in the studio today. Or, you know, the, the heat's not working right. So you know what? Think about this. Somebody's talking about the heat's not working right in the station today, and it's 65 in the studio. Well, I've got six guys on a work crew, and it's 20 degrees outside, blasting the station on a radio in their yeah. truck. And they're up to their knees in water because the sore line broke. And I'm complaining that it's hot out. You'll like this. One summer in Columbus, a few years back, I had an idea. I said, you know what? There are a lot of jobs out there that are very challenging. So I said, send to the station. I got permission from the management. Send to the station. You have a job that is just borderline criminal in the summer. And so for three months over the summer, I went out every Friday and did a show either from a roof of a building while they were tarring it, did one once in 95 degree weather from the sewage plant south of Columbus. And yes, I did smell like sewage for three days, <laughs> even though the, you know, had showers, this and that. So I'm thinking, how could somebody complain when you have folks you know, out there doing that? Yeah. These are not easy jobs. No, it's, 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 it's very true. And and, uh, you know, with, with your experience uh, and your radio time and your radio ties and, and uh, 
your partners that you have partnered with over the years, what, what are the co key components of effective radio advertising? Is it frequency? Is it content? You know, what, what's the information that you feel your audience needs to hear? You've been prompted pretty good, okay? Because there's no doubt frequency is important. I've had times where I've told people, it's like, you know what? Why don't you wait a while before you do this? Because there's no, you know, it's, it's just not going to work. But content is so important to frequency, content, reaching the right audience. You know, certain times, certain, certain okay. shows. Is that okay? Who do they reach? Who do you want to reach? You know, you do, the worst thing you want to do is you don't want to shoot that shotgun in the woods and hope that you hit something, you know, when it's hunting season, okay? I'm going to lock in on what I'm going to get, you know, and that's who I'm going to go after. But yeah, frequency and content, I call it message. It's so important, so important. Little personal touch, believability, and mm -hmm. getting a reaction, hitting that emotion in someone. Uh, you know, and those, those are all, those, those are all, very valid points and and you know you hear the word branding being used mm -hmm. and and you just used a very important word messaging and <clears throat> uh, you do a fantastic job of it the way you personify Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods uh, because you have the understanding and and you're a great ambassador to Baird Brothers across the airwaves uh, but if I have an ad, say, in a Sunday paper, and Saturday prior to, something changes, that ad's going to run the way it is. But if I'm scheduled to be on air with Mark Bishop, on WTAM or any other station that you've represented through the iHeart family, we're gonna be on Monday afternoon. Well, over the weekend, something happened. I call you on Sunday night and I'm saying, hey Munch, can we change that little 15, 30 minute, 60 minute ad? What are you gonna tell me? It's changed immediately. And, and again, I treasure all mediums because I'll, I'll be honest with you. TV still important. Radio enhances TV. However, you're going to have to pull your ad off of there because they're not going to get that change immediately. Especially if it's a live ad, which I do for you a lot of live ads. Is that heck, I've had people call me five minutes before the show saying, "Dude," and you know, car dealers, one of them. You know, people are dying to get vehicles in. I mean, you see the lots; the inventories yep. are yep. down. You know, I have somebody that, you know, I endorse car dealer wise. It's like, I just got two car haulers in. Tell me if this doesn't make you feel good. By the time the show ended, and what's on a car hauler? Maybe 15 cars? Probably not that many. Maybe like more like 10, 12. Right. All those cars were sold. But we were able to change it, which is, which is cool too, that say something happens after my show. I'm not on again until the next day, but you have to change something. For radio, it's no different. I could just, what I do is call one of the producers who are at the station. Just say to whoever it may be, hey, Beebs, hey, Bots, roll, you know, roll this on the, you know, on the recorder, on, yeah. the, on the computer. I'm going to record a new 15 or a new 30 for Bear <clears throat> Brothers. Then we turn around and we can put that right in the system and bump the other one out. You know, and, and, and we've experienced it together uh, at BairdBrothers.com. That left-hand menu bar, there's a, a little tab there for the bargain tree. Baby, bargain tree is my favorite. It's right? a bargain, the best you ever yep. had. Right? So if we want to add or subtract an item from the bargain tree, with the computers, there's a little jumping through hoops to do. Right. If I want to make you aware of a, of a change, it's a phone call or a text, and now all of a sudden it's in your content. You're, you're, you're throwing it out there an hour, two hours later. That's it. Right? Um, it's so, you know, know what radio is too? It's immediacy. It's reaching people. You know what else we're seeing? 
you're in your car. And I want to hit you with this too. And yes, I still play albums at home. Yes, I still play CDs at home. Yes, I'll play some things off the iHeart app at home. But just got a new Trax Chevrolet. Love that Chevy bow tie on my ride, okay? <laughs> American Pride. And I went to press, you know, make sure 1100 was on the radio, press it and this and that. And I'm looking around, I know something's missing. There's no CD slot anymore. <laughs> but again, just to go back to what I was saying, but weren't disc men gonna ruin radio? There's a radio in that car, yeah. brand new car, 2022, but there's no place to play a CD any longer. So we have, you know, overcome and we're still there. You know, and, and, and you, you mentioned the, the spontaneousness of information on the radio and you, and, and you, you made me flash back to, uh, the day the planes flew into the towers. Don't even, I mean, I'll, I'll get very emotional. And, and don't, don't, don't hate me for it. No, I, I was, I, I was, I was on route 303 outside of Streetsboro. I was on my way to Cleveland and a gentleman, uh, co-industry professional like yourself by the name of Howie Chiswick out of Akron, Ohio. God bless how I would have listened to him too, if I had a chance. Right. And, I heard it from Howie Chiswick immediately. And by the time I made a couple phone calls and got turned around and got back home, they were still trying to get it on TV. But I heard it first via the radio. You know, to this day, in fact, just last 9-11, um, I was asked to do the, the commemoration show. So I got John Lanigan, who's retired, yep. Bill Wills, who was on the air at the time. It was touching because I was on WFGI Magic 105.7 with Lanigan and Malone at the time. Yep. Is that, you know, you, you, now every, every radio studio still has monitors in it. And we had like the little, little TV yep. set on top of a, a, a rack of speakers or something. Well, we were on the air that day and we started at 5.30. We were on the air that day till 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. We did go anywhere, but I was able to track down a friend who worked for number one, Sirius XM, yeah. and their building was in view of the Twin Towers. And I was able to track down another buddy that they were able to get cell shot that was just far enough away, but still visible to have them on the air describing what it looked like, and they were in tears. They were oh. barely audible, and that just showed you the emotion there. But like you just said, what brought that emotion to you? What locked you in on that? Yeah. Radio. Exactly. You know, and, and that that particular day, I was an outside sales representative for Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, and, and uh, that brings me to the audiences. Uh, you have a lot of sports oriented content, but it's just not sports people that listen to you. That, that, might, be, that might be a contractor that he wants to catch the game. Uh, might be a DIYer wants to catch a game. Uh, you know, it could, be, it, it, it could be a designer, an architect that they wanna, they wanna, hear, they wanna hear your take on why the Indians lost it in the ninth. So your radio touches a lot of different consumer avenue, con different consumer bases, right? Right, you know, and now don't get me wrong, I don't want to shoot the shotgun, I want to, you know, target, yep. but still, you want to still service those people. If you notice on the show, once a week, from the Cleveland Plain Dealer, Cleveland.com, now again, the show's Munch on, I call it Munch on Sports and Munch Munch More. Is that Mark Bona comes on, he's the Plain Dealer, Cleveland.com guy who writes about new restaurants, new bars, new this, new that, you know, concerts coming to town on down the line, because you want to know what's going on. This weekend, 
I'm going to have because it's, it's, it's a problem right now in Cleveland. Sure, I'm going to do a rundown on the, on the Brown season. But this weekend, I have the head of the FBI in Cleveland to come on. It'll be at 3.15 on Saturday to talk about all the carjackings, what not to do, what to do, what to yep. look for. Because you've been hearing, I mean, in big cities, these have been just a plague. So, again, it is that. So, you know, we will bring you things that are lifestyle, too. We'll bring you, you know, other things that are a part of, a part of your world. You know, share family with you. Not a visual you want, but I always joke when I come in the studio, I'm wearing saran wrap. That's how transparent I am. Yeah. It's like, and you'll have people call about different things, and I hope that I can address them too. So, <clears throat> you know, we uh, fortunately we have a a, a matured uh, uh, relationship with Bairds and 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 uh, yourself. Any advice for, you know, I'm 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 start I'm starting a new little business, oh, okay. and I want to get my message out. How do I how do I go about getting my message out on radio? What's the advantage of getting my message out on radio? Uh, you know, I I'm I'm new to this and and I, I what's the avenue I have to take? Well, I would a look for the influencer endorser for the reasons I gave before because especially our and it's 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 a national thing with iHeart whether it's Bobby Bones, whether it's you know, some of that nature, whether it's me. Is proof that you know we're trustworthy. We're not going to tell you something that's not good. Have someone that could relate to the product, and also you know, try to cater towards our you know, towards the audience. We have stations where, like like a WTM eleven hundred, everyone listens to. We have stations that the moms taking their their kids to school yeah. listen to. We have stations that um, uh, you. Know, you know, people driving back from you know, the job. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, you know what? Been a long week. We don't want to cook tonight. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll order a pizza from here or a pizza from there. So find out the station that best serves your audience. But make sure you can get that frequency and make sure you use everything, too, that's in their recipe. Is there some streaming involved now? Is there a sponsorship of a, of a podcast, too? Because there are a lot of more elements now, like so you call it ingredients to the recipe. But really, I hardly, you know, endorse having an influencer, an endorser, also hitting the people, the stations that will serve you properly. Yeah, uh, you know, over the years, uh, you've you've witnessed the 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 changes in radio, uh, the changes in business relationships. And uh, we, we talked about it before, ups and downs, and we've all experienced them. But with the positive attitude that you bring across the airwaves, sitting and having conversation, uh, one thing's obvious, you love, you love what you've done for the last 43 years. What, what, two things. Okay. Your most memorable radio moment, and what, what are some of the things you love about your job? Because it's obvious you love your job. Okay, uh, let's start that, okay? I am, as you can tell, a little scattered, okay? Here, there, <laughs> and everywhere. Some people love punch in the clock. This is what I have to do today. Punch the clock, I am done and it stays there. I actually treasure every day being different. Every, you don't understand. It happens more than you would think. On my way to the studio or sitting at home, getting a call. Dude, so-and-so just got traded. Dude, sadly for the Browns for years, and it just seemed like my show, when I was doing uh, a, a six to nine show, a lot of times teams would, re would wait till a Friday night at 6.15 to release something to be in the press when somebody got in trouble. Yeah. So they figure, okay, everybody's at happy hour, everybody's this and that, and I was doing six to nine at night. It's like, dang it, so-and-so got arrested again. I won't give any names, okay? Right, right. <laughs> so-and-so's in trouble again is that every day it's something different. Every day, you know, I can get a call and I treasure that too. And we always make fun of them, so I'll give them a positive note. Our big boss at WTM 1100, Ray Davis, 
It's like, you know, we, we, get, we, we get on him when things aren't working and this, but he's the guy. I love it when Ray goes, and I've taught the younger guys and gals at the station this too, when he'll call me and goes, what are you doing this afternoon? Or what are you doing tonight? Or what are you doing this morning? I've always said to him, what do you need me to be doing? Well, this is going on. I'll be right there. Or could you jump on a couple hours early? We're going to bump this because this just happened. Or sadly, someone passed away. Right. Or they just traded for this guy or this guy happened. Or this is the new manager or this and that. I love the unknown. Isn't that funny? I like change. People are like, oh, no, no, change is not always bad. You know, come on. You know, change is, we always like the steady path on the line. You know, I'm kind of a wild and crazy guy. <laughs> Although I pride myself as being the squarest dude in Northeast Ohio. But this is my craziness, my zaniness. I love that part of it, that every day is something different. Every day, like you talked about, something changing maybe. Getting a text from you before I go on air, I, I treasure. But as you could be doing a show, honest to golly, Steve, I'll bet you more than half the shows a year, I'm all prepped up. I got my stack of stuff to talk about. Five minutes into the show or five minutes before the show. Dude, guess what just happened? And bang, hang in a change. Yeah. Yeah. I love that aspect of it. There was another, there was just a two-parter, and I, I forgot what the second part was because I was rolling about how much I love the change. Uh, with with your, your celebrated career in radio, okay. very well deserved, you might have 10. What's the top one or two memorable moments either in your radio career or on the airwaves. Wow, because you know what? There, there, there's been a lot, which I'm glad I could say. Oh. Because, you know, if I say just one or two, do you know what the, the number one has to be? Because of something that doesn't happen every day, it was the Cavaliers Championship. Yes. You know, whether you're basketball, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, lacrosse, whatever it may be. The, the, that city, the city that you call home got its reward. Was, was, was on the air, <laughs> stayed on the air till two and a half. Actually, I volunteered to go out on the streets. I said, there's not going to be any trouble. Everybody's just celebrating. Doing that, going back, getting about an hour and a half sleep, sleeping in some uncomfortable chair in the lobby of <laughs> the station, and going back on the air 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. after being on till 2.30, just bringing a championship. You know what the close one was and they didn't win? Witnessing and being able to go on to talk about Rajay Davis's home run in the World Series <laughs> in 2016 with all the Cavaliers in one of the boxes and them going nuts and jumping up and down. In fact, quick little one on that. I'm at the, in the press box and it's funny, what are we? We're from Northeast Ohio. We don't know anything, you know? So I'm sitting, there's a couple writers there, a couple right from Chicago. There's a guy from New York City. And Rajay Davis comes up to bat. And if you remember, Scotty Baird all like this. He choked up on the bat. And one of the guys said to me, what do you think this is, Little League? <laughs> and I'm biting my tongue, you know? Now, my dad taught me something. I won't do it. He said, you know what? Somebody ever aggravates you real bad? You got to remember, he was a Marine and a factory worker, okay? <laughs> he goes, scratch your nose with your middle finger. <laughs> and they go, if they say, are you flipping me off? You go, absolutely not, my nose itches. <laughs> so the guy from New York's making fun of him for choking up the bat. The two Chicago guys are laughing. What is this, this, and that? And they finally look to me, they go, are you going to answer us? I go, Yeah. Who was it? Who, I mean, I could picture the reliever. It was, uh, he, then he went to the Yankees after that. You know, right. throw, throwing 105 miles an hour. Right. I said, no, he's trying to get around on his fastball because all he's going to throw him is pitches over 100 miles an hour. Steve, didn't you learn playing in the fields over in Canfield, choke <laughs> up a little bit to get around on that fastball and go back in the box? <laughs> so they were making fun of that too. What does Rajay Davis do? Cranks a home run? <laughs> And guess what? Please don't think less of me because I'm a lecturer in church too. <laughs> yeah, I scratched my nose with my middle finger. <laughs> and those guys didn't talk to me the rest of the game because <laughs> I knew and they did it. So that was a big moment too. Um, you know, little things like, uh, you know, being on the air and things like that. But, but the, the LeBron James and that team winning it all, 
But you know what another one is? And you look at people going, people are just people. You know, how would this guy be? How would that guy be? When Kevin Costner came to town to film the movie Draft Day, mm -hmm. right? I was told that he was doing a um, charity concert. You know, he's, he's a big musician, big blues musician. At the House of Blues, and a few, it was through the film commission and the, and the promoters of the show, if you plug his concert, this and that, he'll come on, you know, because he's a huge baseball fan. I mean, Field of Dreams yeah, and that. Yeah. He'll come on with you, you know, do a show, but he's got to record. I was doing mornings at the time, and, you know, they filmed till 1, 2 in the morning, so I was going to record him about 11 a.m., which I thought was still kind of early for a guy who's on the set sometimes late. Well... I was going to record on myself little things you learn to do, you know, if there's nobody around the station. So I see the hotline ring. So I press it on a little speaker box. Everything was set to go. It'd be like Steve Stack. You know, if Steve's going to call you, your people call me. You know what I mean? So on the, uh, on the speakerphone, I hear this voice saying, hey, is Munch there? It's Kevin Costner. Now, I know people are just people. I've learned that at a, at a good age. I mean, I've had Springsteen call the station years ago. And I'm like, uh, 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 uh. and he goes, are you okay? Is Munch there? And I go, uh, this is Munch, Kevin. He goes, are you okay? I said, I'm just a little shocked at you. I figured your people would call and hand you the phone. He, just like this, and I'm thinking, this is a, really a regular guy deep inside. I go, he goes, dude, I'm my people. He goes, so what I've heard, you'd have your people answering the phone for me. <laughs> We talked for about 45 minutes. Like us here, I've used it for three different segments. He was the most genuine guy. And at the end, tell me this, when somebody learns something about you, he says to me, this is to about my wife being a cancer survivor. She was still fighting then. He goes, I heard about your wife. He goes, if you'd like to come to the concert tonight, I've got a couple of real nice plush easy chairs like off to the side. You and your wife could sit on you, sit in them. I'll send a car to come get you guys. And I asked her, and she said, no, I just can't do it. You know, so I called him. Actually, not him, you know, called. Not, he wasn't going to give me his cell. Right. Called somebody else and told him. I said, but thank you for that. But you know what touched me? He said to me, out of all my movies, he goes, you know, which ones you like? I said, you know, well, Field of Dreams first, uh, Love of the Game second. And I said, and I want to thank you for making a couple of bad movies. He goes, what do you mean? I go, what's the one called? The Postman or Waterworld? <laughs> he goes, but if you ever watch those later late, they'll put you to sleep. <laughs> so he was so comfortable. He knew they were bad movies yeah, too. You know? right. Oh, yeah. But the, guess what he said to me about Field of Dreams? He goes, you know, this never has come up. I'm going to give it to you on your program. He goes, the first four or five times my agent kept sending me the script, I threw it away. He goes, who's going to believe about these guys coming out of a cornfield? And a voice up above going, build it, they will come. He goes, this is stupid. This is ridiculous. He goes, I'm going to put you through a final test here. He goes, there was a line, though, that I kept coming back to that got me emotional. Because he's always been a big baseball fan. Yeah. And he goes, what line was that, Munch? I said, I've seen the movie a hundred times. And I get teary-eyed. Like I am now, every time I hear the line, hey, Dad, have a catch. And he goes, that was the line. Yeah. So how cool. So tell me that's not about, here's Kevin Costner, you know, box office gold, whether you love him or anything. I mean, giving me a scoop on the show. Yeah. How, how cool is that? he thought it was ridiculous. You know, guys coming out of a cornfield, you know, voices in heaven. He goes, he goes, my gosh, Dad, well, guess what he said to me? that will tug at people's heartstrings oh. and be emotional. Just like we talk about the emotion when we do commercials. If it doesn't get emotional or response, it doesn't work. That's, that's, that's a great story uh, uh, for, any, for any dad, father, yeah. uh, that's ever played catch with their son or daughter. That's what it's about. Uh, was that a hook or was that a hook? Yes, and right? you know what? <laughs> Tell me, this isn't sad because I'll still play catch. I have to wait till spring. Doctor's orders playing catch. He says, not worried about the arm, this and that. He goes, 
What if you miss a ball and get hit in the chest, you know? <laughs> so I'm thinking, no, it still hurts when I laugh or cough or sneeze, you know? So I agreed with the doctor on that. I, I fudged on a couple of things, but not that. Oh, shoot. Uh, before I let you go, mm -hmm. because because we we value uh, you as as one of the most genuine people that, well, God, that, that we're you, associated really with. I'm humbled by that. But you've you've witnessed the transformation of a pole barn to something that oh, is, is now houses Studio 3B and our workshop and our projects there. What do you think? It's unbelievable. You know what this is like? This is like over the um, New Year's weekend, Sci-Fi Channel had Twilight Zone reruns, okay? <laughs> and, and younger folks say, huh? Dude, this is like the Twilight Zone, like walking into a pole barn. <laughs> when I first walked in, I thought maybe it was the wrong building because it's, it, it's, it's unbelievable. See, you know what else it is? It's a tribute to what Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is. You took a pole barn and you made it into a state-of-the-art studio, but you know what you still did? You kept the heritage. You kept everything that Baird Brothers stands for. Yeah. And it's amazing what is here, whether it's you know the shelving, the antique tools. I mean, I'm flipping out over this table and the wooden vise with the wood screw is that that's what you did and that's what you made. No, this is unbelievable. This is a, is there a couch bed in here? I can see spending a few nights. <laughs> well, we haven't got, we haven't got to that point okay. yet, but you, you know what? And you, you touch on something so very important. Uh, and, and like the cornfield in field of dreams. This is a field of dreams for hardwood, for fine hardwood products. We, wow. we have an adjacent family farm and there's Think a cornfield. You talk about the players walking out of the cornfield. There's a photograph over on the wall wow. of the cast from this old house in a cornfield. He didn't even know you were making that analogy. This is the you? ball diamond here. We're in the ball, right? We're in the ball We're on diamond. the pitcher's mound, buddy. We're on the pitcher's mound. Oh my mound. gosh. How crazy is that? You know, that ties into, and, and once again, I, I, you bring out so many good things to me. It'll be a quick one. But even with, you know, the stuff I just went through when the, the doc said to me, he goes, you know, you're looking pretty good and feeling pretty good. He goes, I figure life-wise you're between second and third base. You know what I said to him? And I said, this is an international cardiologist. I said, Doc, I'm just stepping into the freaking batter's box, okay? <laughs> and that's how I feel. But that's what we're doing here. Dude, we're just teeing. The, yeah, we're either teeing the rubber, getting ready to throw the first pitch, or stepping into the batter's box. Because knowing you and knowing Baird Brothers, this is just the tip of the iceberg of stuff that you're going to be doing. Well... And and we appreciate that, and 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 there there is there is a plan, and we've we've got our lineup card, and I love it. You you Am I were, in a lineup? You 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 were you were batting fourth, buddy. You know <laughs> I don't know about the power, but you know if you need me to, I'll hit the. Now you're going to move runners for I'm me. Not, you know what? If you bat me third, I'll hit three hundred. You bat me fourth, I'm going to only hit about two sixty, but I'll hit the long ball. That's a deal. Okay, that's a deal. Hey, folks. Uh, we are so thankful to have been able to spend uh, some of the best quality time that, that well, I feel that way. I hope you spent do. In I hope the great people here feel that uh, way. Too. You know, with with our trusted partner, um, Mark Bishop, known around Thank the United you. States as the infamous Munch. Thank you so and, much. And I like your your little tagline: uh, "More Munch, Munch More." Yeah, Munch on sports and, and Munch, Munch More. Yeah. You know, great, great, and it's so it's so befitting of you, um, guys. Not only follow Baird Brothers, uh, BairdBrothers.com, our social platforms. Keep track of this guy. Yeah. He's not going to only be Can informational. You? Yeah, you're going to follow him on some of the iHeart channels on, on Twitter at Munch Cleveland. Facebook is simply Munch there, Bishop. There you go. Uh, T.A.M., you, you've got some gigs lined up over a there. A lot of gigs, a lot of mornings, uh, weekends are mine, and when the Guardians start, I'll be doing your uh, pregame and postgame show. So there's 162 times you can catch me there, too. There you go. So, folks, 
continue. Stay tuned. We've got more great stuff coming up with, with characters like this. We're going to have you back because this conversation isn't over. Let's keep going. Brother, friend, I'm honored and humbled to be you. here, my friend. Continued good health. Thank you. I appreciate right. it. Same to you. And again, Bear Brothers' family, be a part of it. See you next time. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time, 